so that and and that brings me to you know the you know i would say iconic but the fantastic obviously brooklyn kids record so yeah. i'm curious i want to kind of go step by step on this one because that beat is retarded i, I mean <laughs> so i don't i don't know like when it how how did it come to you was it was it made for you specifically like no no it was okay. in a package of beats and when i heard it i said i want that immediately when Minnesota gave me that beat, I was like, I want that record right there. I want that beat right there. Minnesota always said back then and now, what I did to it was surprising to him. He said, I went somewhere else with the flow that I chose and what I did to the record than what he anticipated, which is something I love to do even now. You know, I like to, you know, when producers send you music, Danger Mouse is one of the main ones, but when producers in general send you music, a lot of times they have a notion in their head of what you'll do to it because they're sending you something that they think you might like. Oh, he, I listened to his catalog or I know his work. Oh, this would be dope for him. For me, I don't like you to do that. Just send me the hottest shit you got and then I'm going to see how it attaches to my spirit. Uh, okay. That's going to dictate what I do. I use my voice rhyming and I always have, if you listen to my records over the years, I don't even sound like the same dude on a lot of records. <laughs> you know what we I mean? gonna talk about that. I'm. You know, I noticed that. We we were talking flow about that. wise, yeah. pitch wise, style wise, because I'm allowing the music to dictate how I play the instrument. I'm a Gemini. I'm an air sign. Mutable. We we like water. You know what I mean? Air, I'm, so, I'm to Airbender shit. Okay, I got you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and it's not intentional. It's never. Yeah, yeah. It's never been like I'm gonna try this new freaky. No, this beat says this to my spirit and then my spirit will get involved with i me. think to be honest with you brother i think it's i would argue it, it's it's like that a lot of ways and i do think it, it tends to lead to the best records um right. there's a there's a rapper from toronto called yok from back in the day from the 90s and he had this line um on a song called sunlight where he was like beats give me vibes vibes give me rhymes you know, right, and right. you know, it's and it's very much like that. I think that's why producers are so important because they give there's something that it gives to your spirit, and then you take that and you basically intellectualize it. You know what I mean? You, right. you give it, you give it a face, like you know, because it's a, it's a spirit, right? And you well, give it a, well, a, a mind. Yeah. What the first thing that happens for me, first mm. thing that happens is the music will speak to my spirit, and that will dictate how I'm going to do whatever I do. It'll dictate the the flow, as it were. Mm. I mean, the style that I'm going to use is going to be dictated by this music. Now, then becomes the intellectual, the intellectual part of, okay, now I know the style that I'm going to use. What do I want to say? What do I want to address? Do I want to do fuckery on this record? Do I want to <laughs> do... Oh, yeah, I fucked with fuckery. I, I, <laughs> lately, people... I, I, I'm somewhat of a conscious person, so you know I post a lot of things, and you know some people get it twisted. I'll be like, "Yeah, I'm that, but I'm this too." You right. know what I mean? You need you're, to, you you're need with to the shit. That. You're with the fucker. Yeah, okay. I'm with the shit too. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't want to be. Right, right. You know, we we I'm still in the street. You know what I mean? I'm still out here. You know what I mean? I ain't rich. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. So I'm with the fuckery too. So the beat might tell me to do that, or it might tell me to do something intellectual. But see, now bust the nuance. You could say this beat is saying do something intellectual, but that don't necessarily dictate how you will present this intellectual idea that you have. You could be super articulate and like Faramanchi, if you will. Right. Or you could be Macy, if you will. You can give us a Macy, because Mace to me was a supreme rapper. I agree. Farrell March is a supreme MC. Mm. But the What's key the difference? Word is supreme. MCs are, are concerned with the delivery of the song at its highest level. The, mm. the technical aspects of delivery at the highest level. MCs are concerned with that. In truth, most MCs are rooted in that and they come from that. That's why they MCs. That's why MCs don't exist no more. But they're the last of the more Hoogans. You know, every now and then you'll get one on a record, but not really. Uh, mm. The power that be stomped all of that out. So you got the vibe that the 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 the, the record is dictating. I'm gonna use this flow, or, or I'm gonna use this vibe, 
And then you have the technical aspect. How am I going to deliver that? And then you have the content aspect. What is it I want to say? So all of that was is always playing part. Whenever somebody give me a beat, that's always playing. Those so, three aspects. So and and again, I'm curious. So what what was it about that beat that made you just go left like that? Because if, if I can, took me, it took me. It took me right. I didn't think of anything else other than that story. Interesting. It wasn't like I had this draft. Nah. How about this? Nah. That story would. And I tell you this. For me, I would say on some of the records that I feel are like my better records or my best work. It's always that way. There is no playing around and figuring it out. It said, do this. That's it. When I finish writing this page, that's it. <laughs> that's the song. That's interesting. You get what I'm saying? We ain't going to go back and, you know, only one time I had to do some shit like that. That whole first album, this is funny. Nobody knows this. The whole first Scars and Pain EP with the Brooklyn Kids and the Funk Soul Association and all those other songs. Right. I lost it. I wrote it and had it all in a little manila briefcase and that I would take to the studio with me with all the material in there. And I took my daughter, my baby daughter, shopping and we were on the train. And I got off the train at my stop in, at, at, at Broadway Junction in East New York. Stopped before I lived at Liberty, which was the next stop. That's, East, that's the beginning of East New York. And I got off the train without it and lost the entire album before Damn. we started recording. Everything you hear on that album is shit. I had to go back and create some, some, I had, and I was on the time limit because I had already signed the deal. Wow. So I had to go back and like sit down and be like, make whole new shit. What I could remember, I could remember. What I couldn't, I had to make whole new shit. So that whole EP of Scars and Pain is not the original EP of Scars and Pain. I lost that shit on the train. Damn. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's but that's shit. how I know, that was the beginning of me knowing it ain't me, knowing it, knowing that the blessing is is, is working through me. Mm. It's I'm the vessel, and that was the beginning of having that inclination that you are the vessel. This shit ain't you, so don't get all carried away with yourself. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so, you and, and go ahead. I was gonna say that, and and it's funny because. Well, I was going to say nobody ever gave you that, right? Like, found it and was like, oh, this shit belonged to Gemini. But now that I think about it, it's like anything Yo, that bro, gets stuck I wanted to cry. Yo, I, 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 I could bet, man. I got bags from shopping. I'm happy that day I had a little cash and shit. <laughs> Crazy shopping for my daughter. That's I got wild. I got bags of clothes. I got the manila envelope. And I look down. I got, I said, oh, shit. I jump on the next train. I run to Euclid Avenue where the train stop at, figuring out. That shit was gone, bro. And I had to go inside and find new work that I thought was at the caliber of the other songs with Blessing in Disguise. You know what I mean? Right. That's, that's that's the Brooklyn Kids that you hear now. Like, I knew I was going to do a song called Brooklyn Kids about that, but that what you're hearing is not the original song. Oh, wow, okay. That's the subsequent song because I lost the original song. You know Damn. what I mean? So... But you know that that taught me, you know what I mean. It's a, you a vessel, you know what I mean. Right, right, right. That is, and I'm that way with, with everything. I'm like, you know, I, I'm still pretty proficient with my lyrical skills. Okay, okay, you know what okay. I mean. But I'm not a um. I don't sit around writing rhymes all day. You know what I mean. I um, if there's work to be done, then I do it. If there's something for me to go put the pen to, and it's I feel like it's worth my while. Then I sit down and do it, and I always try to do it at the highest level. But All right, so that, I, so one thing, I'm one nitpick I got for that that record, the Brooklyn Kids record, and okay. I, a little personal to me, man, is you didn't shout out Prospect Heights. You know what I mean? Like you shout out everybody, but like there was yeah. no Prospect Heights. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I, truthfully, I didn't think of Prospect Heights because I really hung in Prospect. Right, right. You know I, know. Yeah, yeah. I was all through Crown Heights. I was all through Brownsville. You were everywhere, bro. <laughs> you were everywhere yeah, with yeah, Prospect yeah. Heights. I was like, God oh, damn. Prospect, that's a fact. That's a fact. That's a fact. <laughs> and then you know what, though? Also, and it could just be because I wasn't hanging out there, Prospect Heights didn't shout gangster gangster to me. No, not at all. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. All them yeah. other places that I'm talking about, it was so gully. It was real. It was real. I know. <laughs> you know yeah. I mean? it's... At that time, I don't recall yeah. it. It could have been. 
but I don't recall it being. Yeah, yeah. Know, no, I got you. It, it, yeah, it, and I thought it, I thought it was interesting. You know, like I said, I'm I'm not from New York, but um, mm -hmm. I've I've always had a lot of family in New York, and I've been to New York many times, and then lived in Prospect Heights for some time. Right. So, um, and and it is quiet, you know, and um, right. you know, I, I mean, that's part of the beauty of it, anyways. You know, it's a smaller little neighborhood. Um, so, but yeah. I did think. That, I did think that was funny because I was like, listen, I'm like, yo, he even shouted out Kanasi. I never, I like, what the fuck, man? Like, <laughs> oh, they was getting popping at Kanasi. <laughs> <laughs> if, um, there's a documentary called The Seven Five. If you haven't okay. seen it, I suggest you go watch it. Five, you will okay. see the East New York I grew up in. It's fucking yeah. horrible. <laughs> oh, I, I bet you, man. I bet yeah. you. I've I'm heard not, stories. That man. aesthetic that you see in there yeah. when I was little. Growing up, going to get candy, penny candies and penny cookies and now laters and shit. That's what you see in the 7-5, in, in the 7-5 documentary. And I grew up all of the places that you're seeing in there on both, because it's on both sides of East New York. But that's the East New York I grew up in. So anybody out there wonder where, how Jim and I grew up, where he grew up, go watch the 7-5. You will understand. <laughs>